Okay, hello everyone out there. I'm just taking this opportunity to um, share my long COVID experience. I don't get much time, so I'm doing it while I'm driving, so you'll have to excuse that. Okay, so long COVID. I wanted to share this today because it has it has had a remarkable effect on my life and it's having a growing effect, I believe, like a compounding effect in a bad way, unfortunately. Um, and I don't know what to do. No doctor can help that I found. And I don't know how it's gonna develop. I don't know whether this is a temporary thing, it goes away, or whether I have like permanent neurological damage and that's my life and you know, whether it'll progress worse. These are quite, I mean, imagine not knowing that. I mean, it's positive in one way because it's possible it could get better. So that's, I count my blessings for that. But um, I think even I underestimate how much this has affected me. I try to be brave and sort of just say, oh, let's plow on, you know, I've got life to live, I've got young kids. And But if I think about it, you know, I think this has really took its toll on me, really. Um, and that's not to be negative, you know, I'm, I'm not really one to wallow in kind of um, negativity or I'm not, I'm not a hypochondriac, it's just, um, I think, yeah, this is having a growing effect on me. So, what, my story. Um, March 2020, much like everybody else, um, you know, COVID came, my family got ill. My dad actually ended up in a ventilator. We thought we'd lost him. Um, so we got hit hard by COVID in that respect. Um, and then I had COVID, a mild, you know, mild flu, it felt like. Um, well, it felt like a flu, but just a sort of slash cold slash flu. And then I recovered and I thought, okay. But then I lost my sense of taste and smell severely for weeks. And that was strange because it had really gone. And um, I remember Dr. Hillary on, I think it's ITV or Good Morning Britain, answering a question about whether long uh, whether COVID causes loss of taste and smell and he quite boldly answered that no it's nothing to do with it and that's just a common cold symptom which I am actually to this day quite critical of because he would have misled a lot of people there into uh, thinking they didn't have COVID and, and spreading it who had no taste and smell he should have said I don't know it's a new illness he shouldn't have said emphatically that he knows it's not a symptom because he turned out to be wrong anyway which I think is a somewhat negligent and irresponsible. So, I lost my taste and smell, really surprised me, and it eventually came back, which I was really happy about, because I worried in case that was permanent. And then, I think it was a couple of months later, I started getting massive migraines, really bad, to the point of, insane like and I, and I thought this was totally unrelated because this was months after COVID was long gone so I never traced this to be an issue to do with COVID but I'm telling you now these migraines at one point I felt like someone was driving a screwdriver through my head and there was no way of relieving the pain and I was just bearing the pain so I don't know what was going on there but possibly some damage was done um, but these these migraines would come back the same time every day for three days so I was confused by that because it wasn't just a migraine it was like three in a row in three days and a lot of um, stuff I read online always said like if a migraine lasts longer than a set number of hours like let's say 24 hours it, it's not normal it, you know so I was thinking this is not normal you know more like a cluster migraine which I didn't see much uh, document documentation of online I didn't see that this was a normal thing so that confused me. Then I was out jogging and I got dizzy one day, nearly, nearly falling over and I thought, this is not normal, you know, something's going on in my head. And then this was followed by perpetual migraines. Um, pulsing head was a very common one. Just pulsing head all the time as if my head was boom, 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 boom. The blood pressure was too high in my head and stuff around my eyes. And, and it was then it was very, very bad with depth perception and visual stuff, sensitivity to light, depth perception really went skew if 
So like if somebody was to walk in front of me and then walk behind a tree, normally your brain would sort of process that that person walked, went behind the tree, then came out the other side. My brain was just not perceiving depth like that. It was almost perceiving it subconsciously like the person disappeared for a second and then popped back up and I was like, what, what's happening here? So this was what was going on in my head for like possibly a year. Um, along with constant migraines, you know, I was on medication forever. I had MRI scans. I was always at the doctor saying, I don't know what's going on. Um, it was just problematic. So that has basically more or less continued until this day. But it's got milder at points and it's ebbed and flowed. I would say overall it is slightly better now than it used to be but that's kind of misleadingly positive because I'm having a really bad week at the minute and it's nearly three years later or two and a half years later so you can't exactly say this is just something that's getting better you know this is still affecting my life today um, but it was definitely worse back then I would say now that could have been I've got lots of theories I mean it could have been the jabs having three or four jabs in a row could have been sort of antagonizing the long COVID symptoms, whatever the cause may be. Um, but I don't know, but I think rather than me just continuing to describe, I'll give you a few things that have helped. And hopefully if anyone's listening, this might help them a little bit. You know, that would be one positive to get out of this video. I found recently that taking regular aspirin and sometimes dampen it a little bit, but I was taking that every day, all day, and I had to say, hang on, I've got to stop this. Um, obviously, when I had a bad migraine, sumatriptan's a remedial um, like drug, but again, I was taking that all the time, and that's probably not good. Um, relaxation and reducing stress, reducing disruptions. So if you're doing something, just try not to have a lot of distractions. That can scatter your brain a bit, and that makes it worse and getting stressed and even passionate about something can push it over the edge and just make me bad. And trying to meet deadlines, like trying to work, finish work for five o'clock on Friday, that used to leave me like the whole weekend, like absolutely mentally smashed. Like I had to sit on the couch for some Saturday and Sunday just in no man's land because of that. So being pressurized doesn't help this condition. So if you can do them, you know, they've helped me, but they haven't got rid of it. It's still here. Uh, this week I'm having a bad week. It's causing, you know, depression, all sorts of things. Um, when I say it's causing depression, I mean, it's, I can tell it's this that's causing depression. It sort of zaps my brain to the point where I'm just like, the mood is just so low and it's pulsing all the time. My head is pulsing inside and it goes on overdrive. Um, so I've read about things that may be the cause. I've read things that say it could be due to deterioration of blood brain barrier, possibly caused by damage from COVID or whatever, and then more toxins and things get into the brain and cause problems. Um, I've read things that say micro clotting could be a problem and that could cause small blood vessel problems, which could lead to dilation of small blood vessels and cause migraines. Um, I've read things that say it's it's like a dysautonomia, which could be to do with the parasympathetic nervous system and the fight or flight mechanism being stuck out of sync and things like that, which again could make sense because if the head's pulsing all the time, it might be as if it's on alert, but when you're resting, you know, and I mean, I don't know yet. No doctor knows. I will say one thing. And I don't like to be critical, but the NHS has been absolutely useless with this. I've been going on and off for two years, and I've been told it doesn't exist. If I haven't got a bad chest, it can't be long COVID. Um, there's nothing wrong with me. I've been told by a specialist, neurologist, just to go and eat a better diet and exercise. I mean, as if that's got anything to do with this neurological stuff. And by the way, I tried that as well. I lost three stone and, and went to the gym every day. And guess what? I still feel the same. So... You know, the type of dismissive attitude and lack of awareness of the NHS has, has been very bad. And at the moment, I haven't been referred to the long COVID ward for nearly a year. And I've been back three times to check why. And they keep saying, they've sent you letters and have you not received them? And I said, no, I haven't. Can they not ring me? Like, I want to go as soon as possible. Anyway, 
don't want to rant but that is kind of a bit of a scattered description of, of my long covid and you know home life's affected like i'm very snappy at home i can't really cope with the kids just like around me all the time like with the different distractions and noises i just get very impatient and frustrated um and i mean people might say oh yeah well don't we all no no this is different <laughs> this is like your brain is in unbearable like fog and like you know and if you don't get out of the environment or stop it you just it develops into a migraine and pulsing and this is like uh symptomatic stuff this is not just being your mood being a bit irritated um so yeah it's it's three years on nearly um i think it's just over two and a half coming up three years and it's 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 still there and, I, and it confuses me and i don't know where i'm gonna go with it my work life has been really affected i just survive at work now i just try and make sure i've got enough money coming in but i don't really have the uh the gumption and the gusto to try and have any faith that i can move forward in, in my career now um, based on the fact that like you know taking forward movement and initiative in work is takes a lot of energy a lot of inspiration and motivation and you try and do that when your head's cloudy and pulsing every day it's difficult <laughs> you know I'm maintaining work at the moment obviously everything I've I've built up I, I'm sort of like maintaining it but it's like a kind of damage limitation kind of survival mode and in, in one way, I'm just thinking like, I'm trying to help, like I'm trying to wait until this improves and then I'll I'll go out and, um, you know, improve my work, you know, like I'm just sort of sitting thinking, I'll wait until this goes away, then I'll go back to business, you know. That's kind of my subconscious thinking, but <laughs> you can understand after like three years, you're thinking, hang on, when's this gonna go away, if ever? So, I live in hope, but one of the reasons I wanted to put this out, that there may be a solution. There may be somebody who says, why don't you try this? And it works. So part of it is a bit of a, a reach out call for help to see if anyone knows anything. You know, the, the power of the internet, somebody might say, have you, have you tried this? And it could work. So let me know if you do know anything. And if you've been helped by any of my tips in a minor way, then that would be great as well. Um, I would say that having aspirin like daily and sumatriptan when it develops is something that's kind of helped me to get by when needed. But um, like I say, it's not a long-term solution. So yeah, thanks for listening. Sorry if I've blabbered on a bit. I'm just basically doing this on the fly, trying to spit out the information to get it out into the ether. Have a good day. Thank you for listening.